I want to ask Constable, mate. Ask your kids about me, mate. Ask him if he knows my bars. Because they know my bars, your kids know my bars. So if your kids can like my bars, why can't I perform? I have never been in the club, ever. And somebody has been shot. I've never seen no one pull out no knife and run into the crowd, or I've never seen no one pull out a gun. Nah, I don't. Just cause we come from the gutter and we know I've been proud to be part of the grime scene for about 10 years, but I'm starting to get concerned that what we do is slowly being strangled by London's police, and in particular a form I keep hearing about called the 696. I was booked to play at Just Jam at the Barbican with Big Nasty in February, but following police advice, it was cancelled the day before without a valid reason. Our event seemed to be another victim of this form, 696. So at a time where tensions have been at their highest in the capital, I want to know why the police seem to be suppressing our culture. My shows, they normally go ahead quite smoothly, but there's other artists that get their show shut down a lot. They should have spoken out before. But since it's happened to me now and I've experienced it firsthand, I think now is a very good time for me to actually start asking questions and get a bit pissed off and ask people and find out what's actually going on instead of just sitting in silence. Big Nasty was also on the Just Jam lineup. He's got a BDL tour tonight. It's in London and it's Big Nasty, it's JME and loads of other artists that weren't on Just Jam, but they're still from the grime scene and it's going ahead tonight. Where's the problem? What is the reason why shows get shut down? What do we have to do to keep shows to go ahead? Do we know? How do we find out? Who the fuck do we speak to? It's J-M-E. <laughs> BDL, we're out here in London. BDL, 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 BDL. When I was in school, I was lead tenor in a choir. Bass, voice. Gone, yeah. Jesus. And I performed at the Barbican, but obviously I went there in my school uniform in my school and it was blessed, you know what I'm saying? Now we wanna go there in my hoodie and my hat and you know what I'm saying? It's not blessed. You can see my driving a German whip, blocked out with the leaning back. You can see my driving a German whip, I look like a ball of pizza now. I'm telling you, people were praying that something bad's gonna happen today. Look, we haven't had a proper grime rave in Camden in ages. They get me? This has proved them so wrong. I've got people from South London, North London, wow, yeah. East London, Yorkshire, Russians, I've even got Polish people here. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Look, ladies out, all in a good time. Hello ladies, looking lovely, you know? You all right? Looking lovely. I'm trying to do an interview, stop, stop, stop distracting me. Oh yeah. shit. I tried to clock this Form 696 thing and I thought I understood it, but it turns out that I don't because, see what, a few weeks ago you were supposed to play with Nasty at the Barbican. Yeah. You and Nasty, you're not super intimidating mm. and Mount Kimby isn't either. Mm. Yeah. So on tonight, which if you're someone who don't really listen to this music too tough, you just yeah. look at people's faces, look yeah. at names, it can look like the most hostile lineup you've seen toured in certain places in England yeah. for a long while. So how does it slip through the net? What is the difference? I don't know. I ain't heard from these people. It's like they pick and choose, or for all the intelligence they have, maybe tonight they had a lack of intelligence, isn't it? <laughs> when we're trying to go to other venues now, it makes it hard. Like Jamie was was on that lineup, Nasty's on that lineup. When you go to venues and they turn around and say, no, just because the police have kind of threatened them with revoking their license, it, it's a it's a piss take, isn't it? It's, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Is the back wall gonna clip? That's the question. No, it's good. All these buildings are still not putting put back up since the riots, man. There was no tension. It was because of what happened, man. The police. Like, that subject's still a sore subject, man. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be a sore subject forever because it, it's not closed, man. They built that back up, the Allied carpet, and then see that, that shop there it used to be called Red Lion. It was a pub. This was probably like the first place I played in there, Red Lion. We listening to Bashman. Their ragga tunes and whatnot, girls dancing and everyone in the corner in the darkness doing whatever, and then it'll be silence for a bit, and then you hear a little garage tune come in, and you know it's your time. And the door used to be exported up, that used to be the door. You go in there, and it was up, upstairs and there. It was just fun, that was the start of it. That, that's what we love doing, that's the reason why we do it. I know a lot of MCs who have opinions on this subject, but I wanted to find someone who had first hand experience of using the form to put on grime events. Cheeky's been organising raves for a while, including the legendary Eskimo dance. 6 9 fixed or dummy is basically introduced so the police can assess the risk of an event. I feel like the form daily. Like, yeah. It's a form I use all the time, like, no inside out, the artist's name, the actual stage name, 
their date of birth, their real address. The police obviously check that against the database. They will basically assess the person as an individual. Legally, they cannot shut you down. It's the actual club that's shut down, but you don't understand the sort of pressure that they put on the club is bullying. They're basically bullying the club to shut you down. According to the police, the form is a risk assessment procedure used for identifying and minimizing any risk of serious violent crime happening at the proposed event to enable the event to proceed with minimum risk. Initially, after the Barbican show was cancelled, the City of London police said on their Twitter that the event was shut down because of a public safety issue. They then made a statement saying that they were concerned about underage drinking and overcrowding at the sold out event. There was no explanation as to whether there was a risk of serious violent crime. The rave that got shut off before for us at Barbican is gone now. It's done. It's got shut off. It, yeah, we never did it. It's done. Now, can you please tell us what you know? Like, what was meant to happen? It's just like, oh, we heard this and it got shut off, but we're not going to tell you what we heard. So I would like to learn what actually goes down. I want to know what actually happens. Where I'm from, growing up, the police were just seen as a bad thing. Like, the police, it was like, wasn't cool. Even if there was trouble, you wouldn't really call the police. You'll call your neighbours, you'll call your friends, you'll call other guys from other areas before you call the police. Jamie, Adenuga, me, the person, I'm just a guy that grew up in an area where I got to learn a lot of things because of the people I was around. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a streetwise person, but then you'll see some guy called Chris Michaels from Essex or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He watches anime cartoons and like he plays computer 24 7. You'll see, see him as a sort of different stereotype to me, but we'll probably be the same. Like I'll watch animes 24 7, I'll play computer 24 7, I've got a, a vegan diet, I don't smoke, you know what I'm saying? The only thing is, I just make gangster rap or whatever, but it's just grand music, it's just, you know what I mean? It's just having fun with music but people will see me a certain way. But I won't blame them. But I'll blame the police, because it's their job. Now this is the ambulance. These are the cool guys. <laughs> Any violence in my lyrics is comical, like, or elbow drop or whatever, you know what I mean? It's comical, it's like from a wrestling reference or, or a computer game reference or whatever. I don't go out there saying, yeah, like, I'm gonna shoot everybody, da, 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 da. that's not me. I, everyone knows who I am. You know, I never had any direct run-ins with the police. So now I've never been arrested in my life, not once. I want to know how and why the Form 696 started and if there's anything we can do to get some dialogue going with the police. Someone who understands the legalities of the form is civil liberties solicitor Shamik Dutta, who specialises in legal action against the police. It's been around for very, very many years um, and the form's actually changed relatively recently. It used to actually specifically ask for an ethnic breakdown of the people who are going to be in attendance and it used to list certain types of music and genres which are generally ones yeah. which black and Asian people would want to go to. Now the form's been changed, but just because the wording's been changed, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not being applied in a discriminatory fashion. And if you look at page two of the form, the guidance as to when it needs to be completed predominantly features DJs or MCs, and it says at the top, please note the use of this form is not primarily intended for a live music event. Do the police really have specific intelligence that there's more violence at events which have a DJ and an MC than for other live music events. I mean, if they have, then we certainly haven't seen it. The form has already come up against high profile opposition, notably from former government advisor and musician, Fergal Sharkey. It would be true to say that they did take out the question. They specifically asked, are there any ethnic minorities attending this event? They have, however, replaced it with one which says, what is the target audience of this event? And I think, might I be in safe ground to assume that white middle-class professionals from North London is not the answer they're looking for. And I think that the call needs to continue in this form, it needs to be scrapped. I'm not the only artist that wants answers from the police. I met up with my mate Jamma to find out why he thought London's police were targeting grime raves. What they're actually doing is stereotyping because they're saying that like, underground UK music that's like revolves around um, turntables and decks and radio stations and club events which is performed live over a disc jockey and an, an MC is threatening. Originally the image of it was all these black guys in a dark place shouting, yeah. we're scared. Mm. That, that is where this comes from. We are professional musicians now. You know, it's gone past the days of, you know, we was going to a rave to MC for a hundred quid. This is a professional business to us. So I think the, the forms are ridiculous. I do strongly believe that it's racist. Nobody has given as much to Graham over the past decade as DJ Logan Sama. And I know he feels strongly that the scene will die if this current situation continues. I haven't had loads of shows shut down for Form 696, but it doesn't take loads of shows being shut down 
for it to be a huge thing because when one or two large events that have had a lot of money spent on them get closed down, everyone else sees it and it just has like a subconscious thing like it's not worth my while risking investing in putting yeah, on a show involved. like this. I may as well put on a house rave that I'll always be able to do, move into other genres of music or, and, and lineups and acts that aren't as much trouble. The number of people that I've seen either quit music entirely or drastically alter artistically what they're doing because making this type of music wasn't able to support them financially. I mean, my view on this is that at the moment it looks like the balance isn't being struck in the right way. At the moment it seems like there are far too many events being cancelled and that also artists aren't really sure exactly how they can stop that happening. There seem to me to be three different ways that this form or this procedure overall could be challenged. Whether the procedure is fair, whether it's discriminatory, and whether you should have a right to challenge decisions made by the police so that events aren't cancelled. So where the police say they're going to disclose information about you, do you have the right to say to them, can we have a grown-up conversation about this? My main problem with Form 696 is the complete lack of communication to try and educate, you know, what we Actually, can do. Yeah. Like, is it more difficult to police a certain demographic of society than another? Is that what you're saying? There is no communication from their side on what we can do to improve the profile of the event, to mitigate that risk that they're assessing that there is. And that's why you get this ignorant attitude like, fuck the police, yeah. fuck them, blah, 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 because there's no, <laughs> there's no, no discourse idea. going on. Deal with the bad element, you're the police. You say you've got intelligence at these raves that something's gonna happen, but nothing happens. You know why? Because we're all having fun. We're a community. Show us what that intelligence is. Like, be honest with us, be upfront, be transparent. We've got to be transparent with you, be transparent with us. Serious, you're not serious, don't say serious. I, say serious. I have never been in the club, yes, 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 yes. ever, and somebody has been shot, or you know what I mean? I've heard like, at some West End club, oh, this police have shut it down because someone got stabbed there, or you know what I mean? But they would never say, oh, pop music, because in the, in the West End clubs where people are popping bottles and whatever, they're just playing chart music, but you never hear them saying that the flipping, chart artists, music's causing it, you know what I'm saying? But if there's a show and it's a grime event and something happens, then it's the grime music that is causing it, like we've got to shut the show down. Next, I met with journalist Sonny Hondal, someone who campaigned against the use of the form back in 2009. Their job is not to say that we think you're going to create more trouble so we should be able to shut you down. I mean, their, their job should be to deal with the crime after it happens. And frankly, if you're shutting down events before they even happen, if you're making it much more difficult for of certain kinds of people to have those events, then you're blatantly discriminating against certain genre of music. Yeah. You're making it harder for people to experience certain kinds of music. You know, and, and that makes life difficult and it affects our communities. When we used to go out, there used to be lots of events put on by Asian people. We used to go to a lot of garage events, you know, drum yeah, and bass yeah. events. You know, that to me was part of my British identity. I find it really sad that the police really just try to discriminate so explicitly and said these kind of music are creating trouble and therefore we want them shut down. It's an attack on people's civil yeah. liberties, but also it's blatant discrimination. Police trying to shut us down, they're just shutting down the community the same way they used to go to an area and say, oh, this is an Asbo area, everybody get off the street. That's the same way we see them shutting down our raves. Someone tried to pick on one incident, you know what I'm saying? Just pick anyone from the music scene that's gone to jail before and say, oh, that's why they want to shut it down. Like things that were happening in the music like that, that will happen anyway, regardless of the music. That's, that's what happens in the community and that is not nothing to do with our music. Our music is probably a result of that, rather than that being a result of the music, you know what I'm saying? Serious. Right now we're on our way to the Voice newspaper headquarters to speak to one of their writers, Elizabeth Piers. She wrote quite a controversial piece a few weeks back about the behaviour of black youths in London. She said something like, events playing black music, rap, reggae, R&B, garage or grime have sadly become synonymous with asking for trouble. Anyone who disagrees is lying or out of touch with London's club scene. You know, when I was coming up in the, you know, the early noughties, there were so many events and raves that we could go to in central London. Mm -hmm. And one by one, they just started closing down. We get pushed further and further out. Yeah. And it's because of those, you know, the incidents may be far and few between, but they do happen. And that gives the police the excuse to limit people's creativity. And I'm firmly on the side mm -hmm. of artists. 
business owners, people who give their, you know, their blood, sweat and tears to making sure that London's club scene is vibrant. And I feel that people are doing them a disservice if they go to those events and they don't go there with pure and good intentions. And at the end of the day, it's, it's the rest of us that loses out. Going to a rave now, going to an urban event or a black music event, it's, it's perceived as if you're asking for trouble. Do you reckon that's something that has been we've been tarnished with from from past events you know what I, I genuinely think that that could be an issue um as in today's generation paying for maybe some of the mistakes that were made in the past mm. and there's been so many times where i've been at uh, you know clubs you know from the age of 18 to you know 25 where we have had you know gunshots and we've dropped to the floor mm. but you know you're young and you're silly it's kind of almost part of the excitement and it was only now looking back where i think Oh my goodness, I can't believe that was just part of that culture. Yeah. And I would like to think that it's changed. And, and truthfully, I'm not out on the scene yeah, as, it, as yeah. much as I was. But if, if it has changed and it's not like that, then you know we really do need to look at this issue and keep on talking about it. Label owner, DJ and promoter Elijah from Butters is someone who knows the health of the scene right now. I wanted to find out how he copes with putting on grime raves in London. The strangest show that we did was the week of the London Rats. In uh, 2011, we actually had our first big room club night yeah. on that weekend, that Saturday, and it was completely fine. I think that's the only time when you felt that it could have been some sort of tension for something to kick off, and yeah. it's never, it's never happened. In the like house and garage days, there's a few things I've heard of, right? like hearsay, like oh this happened at that show or that show, but I haven't experienced it myself. So either everything's changing, the music's changing, and they're policing it in an old-fashioned way, yeah. or it's just a direct all-out stopping our creativity. That kind of rule doesn't really follow in other, other music. If you had like a punk record and it's telling people to smash yeah, things down, sma yeah. nothing's getting smashed down. Mm. People having a good time, people were like stage diving, yeah. moshing. Yeah. But I don't think that, that kind of like attitude and culture can translate among our music for some reason to the police anyway. Mm. I feel like there's like a misunderstanding of what actually happens at these kind of shows that we do. Mm. Sometimes yeah. they think, all right, it's MCs going crazy, fighting, madness, pandemonium for like, we don't organise what we do properly, you know what I mean? That night, Wince took over Fabric for a massive celebration of underground music in London. And with Meridian Dan performing the highest chart in grime anthem in years, it felt like a victory for our scene. Now when you go to watch, watch the throne tours, you got people dressed in the same way we dress and they're doing crazy stuff, jumping in the air and nobody sees it as any trouble. And if something does kick off, it's because of two dickheads, not because of the scene. Do you know what I'm saying? There's football events where things kick off all the time. Do you know what I mean? What, are you going to start getting the names of flipping football players? No, you can't play football anymore because people just come out and he's a bit of a lad. So you know, like, come on. With German Whip and other songs that are right now, like, it's re-energised and giving everybody, yeah, we're doing this for the right reasons. and bit of hope. And yeah, yeah, yeah well, let's, let's all carry on because there's hundreds of kids behind us, you know, inspired. And then they're just going to carry on doing what we're doing and then the scene's going to grow. And by the time these kids are our age, they're going to be more accepted in society doing the stuff they're doing. Wearing the clothes they're wearing, listening to the music they're listening to, and it's not going to seem intimidating because we've grown with it. Give it another 10 years, 20 years, it's going to be totally different because everybody is onto this. Everybody wants to embrace it, but... Hasn't been around long enough. And yeah, it hasn't been nobody, around long enough. There nobody doing it above, yeah. like, above a level that... Above us, really. Yeah. It's not something that everybody has to shy away from. Like, we're all artists, we all have got to express ourselves and we choose to express ourselves through grand music. <laughs> What can be done? Civil rights are not things that are given by the state in any circumstance. It will always take somebody standing up and saying, I don't think this is lawful, please explain your position to yeah. me. There are still answers that we need to see from the police. To me, the London's police use of Form 696 is killing the pulse of the grime scene. So I wanted to know from the police themselves how we could work together to stop our raids from being shut down. The City of London, the Metropolitan and the Association of Chief Police Officers were all approached to be part of this documentary. They all declined. 